Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Sicotti. I'm the chief of, of the sports medicine at the Rothman Institute and the director of the sports medicine fellowship and, and research. I'm current medical director for the Philadelphia Phillies and the president of the American Orthopedic Society for Sports Medicine. You're listening to Interview with the Surgeon with the Surgeon Agent. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Interview with the Surgeon. Today, we welcome Dr. Michael Sicotti, Director of the Sports Medicine Fellowship at the Rothman Orthopedic Institute and the current 2021 President of the American Orthopedic Society of Sports Medicine. Doc, how are we doing today? I'm doing fine, Matthew. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us. So now thinking back, you know, and getting started, what were your goals and aspirations during your residency and how those changed throughout your fellowship? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, Matthew, through my whole career, I was certainly early in life, very focused on science and biosciences. I knew I had an interest in that. And I um, very much liked to work with my hands and do things like carpentry, those types of things. So I had this mindset about maybe going into a surgical specialty. Um, I played sports my whole life and I loved sports. So it just seemed as I, as I went into medical school and my training that they were all sort of um, converging and leading me towards a path towards orthopedics um, and then ultimately sports medicine. And then probably the most important thing is that I fell in love with somebody who was an orthopedic sports nurse. So that was like really, really what got me going in that direction. But yeah, I think it was just my path sort of evolved with the things that um, you know, spoke to my heart, like the things that were important to me. So thinking about that fellowship year, you know, what was your mentality heading into your first job search and how that perspective changed in the beginning years of your career? That, that's also a great question because I think that um, that point in a young physician's career is truly pivotal. And there's a lot of angst because you know that, that in a short period of time, you're going to be all on your own, right? You're going to be making the decisions and you have maybe for one of the first times in your life, the ability to really sculpt what you want to do. Um, and that's a wonderful thing, but it can be intimidating. For me, I always had interest, uh, not just in certainly the clinical aspects of orthopedics and sports medicine. I wanted to, I wanted to do the highest level of orthopedics uh, from a clinical, clinical and surgical uh, perspective, but I also had great interest in, in academics and in research. And so the, 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 the place where I did my residency was very much focused on that. That was a dual mission uh, at Thomas Jefferson University and the Rothman Institute. So as I went through my residency, that helped to direct me as to what I really wanted to do. And so I was fortunate enough to get fellowship at an outstanding place, the Curlin and Job Clinic in Los Angeles. And um, I found very quickly that that was the same mindset there. You know, the highest level of, of clinical sports medicine, but also continuously be brave enough to continuously ask, how can I do this better? And, and, and to do like research and to, to try to answer those questions. During my residency, um, the, the leadership of our residency and our practice, uh, they were very forthcoming and asked if I would be interested in coming back to Philadelphia, which is really what I wanted because I grew up there and uh, I loved that dual mission that they had. So for me, it was a bit maybe more straightforward than for other young physicians because I had a very good idea before I even started my fellowship that I was going to come back to, to a place that I loved uh, dearly. A lot of young physicians, they don't have that. They don't, they don't have that perspective. But I would say that um, the same kind of uh, guidelines that I had, you know, what I said earlier, like listening to your heart and, and um, figuring out what things are really important to you from a, from a professional standpoint, from a personal standpoint, and then um, asking those that are your mentors, your current teachers, your, your current attendings, uh, describing to them what you're interested in, they're going to help guide you and, and, and give you a perspective on role, uh, you know, on opportunities that are, that are, that are available. And that's, that's, I think, the way that most current young physicians do it. So can you briefly take us through your journey as you rise the ranks of the Rothman Orthopedic Institute? 
So, so when I started, you know, I was obviously a young, young physician in the practice and is, is the way for virtually all young physicians. Um, you just do what you have to do. I mean, you're in the trenches and you're, you're, you're covering emergency rooms and you're establishing relationships. And as your practice matures, um, you can really take ownership of, of what direction you want to go to, to. You can hone down the types of, of orthopedic or for me, sports medicine issues that are really of interest. And so I can see those patients now, but as you're first starting, you really have to be broad in, in, in the kind of patients that you see. And really, uh, I would say the most important thing is developing relationships, you know, always doing what, you know, what we took the oath to do, you know, to, to help people and, and to be kind and compassionate and, and walk the path of their injury. And they may or may not need surgery, uh, but you're developing a relationship with someone. And if you treat them the right way, the way that you would want to be treated or your family members, that's incredibly powerful. So when they do have something that's like totally in your wheelhouse that really excites you, they're going to come back to you because you took such good care of them. And I think that's an important message for a young physician as surgeons, like we want to operate, like we want to, we want to, we want to do surgery and orthopedic surgery, sports medicine surgery is about as tangible as any kind of profession. It's broken, it's torn and we fix it. And, and so it's very tangible and, and that's what's in our genome is to do that. But I think when you're younger and you're first starting, many of the patients you see are not going to need surgery. But if you walk that path with them and you develop a, a really deep relationship, they're going to come back to you when they do have those kind of issues. And they're going to send their family members back to you when they have those issues. And that's how you really develop a practice. So for me, I came back and I was doing whatever I was asked to do, right? Because you've got to be a team player. And um, as, as, as my practice matured, then I could really move in the direction that I wanted. And we, as we brought in other physicians, we could, um, we could, as a team, sort of divvy up where everyone's interests were so that we could provide uh, the broadest uh, type of care for our, for our patients. Uh, not every one physician would be doing absolutely everything, but everyone would be doing what was of their greatest interest. And then you're providing the best care for patients because you're focused on that and it's in your research wheelhouse and your educational uh, wheelhouse. And that's one of the, th the great things about Rothman is that you know, we have an amazing practice with 300 plus musculoskeletal providers and that have a dual uh, mission that I mentioned to you earlier of clinical care and, and academic uh, uh, education and research. And I think that's what allows us to provide a high level of care. So if you're focused that way, um, then, then your practice will mature in that fashion. And ultimately you're gonna do exactly what's in your, what's in, what speaks to your heart. And so that way I, my practice uh, matured and I was ultimately able to do the things that really are uh, exciting to me. Now, as a leader in the field, what were some of the keys to your success that shaped your early career as you climbed to the top of the space? I think it's, again, um, just always providing, always treating people the way that you would want to be treated or your family member, like walking the path of their injury, as I said earlier. Um, and though we as physicians might do everything exactly the way that it's supposed to be done, and we, you know, whether it's a surgical procedure or a non-operative treatment or post-operative rehabilitation, um, not every time does everything happen and, and evolve perfectly, right? And if you walk the path with a patient, you develop the, the kind of relationships that, that they so much appreciate. And so you, you, you develop this, this incredible uh, following of patients that trust you. And I think that's a really important thing in the beginning to do that. Uh, but also as you're, you're developing your, your practice, um, you need to take advantage of the resources you have. And what I mean by that is that your, your mentors, your mentors in your, you, that have educated you, they might be uh, in your medical school, they might be in your residency, they might have been in your fellowship, they might not be a partner of yours, but take advantage of those, of all the, the talents that they have. And then also in your practice, your senior partners. Uh, and, and there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. And there's so much knowledge that they can give you 
That's not to say that, that uh, things don't evolve and a young physician brings so much like to the table because they have this, this, you know, this wide-eyed perspective and they look at things uh, in a new way that helps us to evolve our care to make it better. But also there's so much that a, that a more seasoned physician has that can help uh, the young physician mature. And I think that's the beauty of this, like when you, when you work together. So a young physician should definitely, they come to this with you know, what, what's true and right and taking care of patients, but they also take advantage of, of uh, and benefit from the, the, those that are uh, along the path, further along the path that can mentor and guide them. For me, I did, I, you know, that was a big part of it. Like, for example, my fellowship, I mentioned to you at Curlin and Job, and, and Frank Job was just a huge mentor of mine. And I just knew that when I had any issue or problem, like, I could pick up the phone and he would, in this like wonderful little kind of draw he had, he would guide me and, um, and, and my current partners, you know, Dick Rothman here before he passed away, just an amazing mentor that would that would always be able to redirect me. Even if I knew it was the right thing, it, it's nice to have somebody looking in the eye that you really trust to say, yeah, you're doing it the right way. So that's important. Now, as a fellowship director, what type of advice do you have for the graduating chief residents and fellows entering the professional job market for the first time? I think that that's, like, that's a huge question that's really important. And I think that, that um, again, as I said earlier, that this can be overwhelming for young physicians, the whole process. I mean, they're so excited about being finally able to decide where they're going to be uh, and what they're going to do, but it's still, it's overwhelming. And I think there are certain aspects of it that are important. I think that, uh, that a young physician should strategically assess opportunities that they have. And when I say that, I mean, they, they should ask themselves certain questions maybe even before they identify specific spots, they should ask, okay, what are, what are my career goals? Do I wanna be a purely clinical uh, you know, physician? Do I wanna be involved in academics you know, in terms of education research? What kind of balance do I want? Do I wanna do both? Like this a whole dual, which is, which is you know, increase, becoming increasingly popular, but this dual role of being a clinical physician that is very much involved in academics. So I think you know, defining what one's career goals are are really important. Number two, I think, what kind of setting do you wanna be in? What I mean by that is, do you wanna be in it? Do you wanna be completely private practice? Do you wanna be completely in control of what's happening? And there are advantages and disadvantages to that too in a market that's, that's, that fluctuates uh, in terms of, of uh, uh, health insurance and reimbursements and patient access. Do you wanna be in a health system where the health system does that for you? And you're going to work and you can focus on taking care of patients, but you don't have to deal with the business side of it. Do you wanna be sort of in between? Do you wanna be that, this term we use now, private, you know, private-demic, you know, private practice, but you're very much associated with educationally, with with residents and fellows and medical students. So I think you decide then, you know, secondly, what setting do you wanna be in? I think thirdly, you, you think about ge geography. You know, what speaks to your heart? Like where do you wanna be as a person? Where do you, you know, what's important to your significant other, you know, to your spouse or your significant other and your family, you know, where's your family and what kind of relationship you have your, with your family? Do you wanna be close to your family? Do you wanna be far from your family? I think that's important. And, and then I think, that the specifics of a, like a contract come into play. And I, so I, I purposely would put those a little bit further down, um, you know, the salary. And, and we're just like, we're blessed that, that like physicians, surgeons are gonna do well. They're gonna do well. So I think, yeah, the salary is important. And, you know, what kind of support staff are you gonna have? What's your pathway to say um, partnership in your practice? Those things are really important too. But I think the other things are really important. Your career goals, you know, your setting, your geographic location. So that's kind of the way I would look at it. And that's the advice that we give our, our younger physicians. Now we dealt with the pandemic in 2020 and still kind of now in 2021. So what advice do you have for the graduating class regarding their networking and outreaching process in a virtual world? Yeah, I think that, I mean, this is something that like we could never have imagined would have happened, right, Matthew? And I think that, um, we're reinventing everything. Like in, in the short period of time, we're reinventing what we do. We're, we're re needing to reinvent how we deliver medicine. I can 
speak to you just in terms of uh, Major League Baseball, having taken care of the Phillies now for almost 30 years. Um, things were just beautifully set up and methodical in terms of how care was provided to a professional baseball player. And then all of a sudden we have a, a, a global pandemic and, and in a matter of weeks, we have to literally reinvent how to deliver care to a professional athlete. Um, and so the same sort of thing applies to, there's a logic to how a young physician would ease into their own practice. And, and all of a sudden, like all the rules change, everything changes. I do think though that the principles that I just mentioned to you are still important. They still apply to how you might find a location. I think you should use that, that um, strategic assessment that I mentioned to you. Uh, I think that if you identify spots, don't be afraid to reach out to groups all over the country that fit that checklist that you've set up. Um, and don't be shy about um, contacting them on a regular basis, even though the response might be, well, we're currently not looking. If you do it in an appropriate way, you're showing a level of enthusiasm and interest that it's, it's interesting, it's shocking sometimes how a group might not be looking, but then the more you ask them, they realize well, this, is a, this is a really talented person and, and they have great interest here. And you know what, like maybe we do have like some room here for this person. So I think to keep asking is important. And I also think that we have to be young physicians now because of the, the, the pandemic and because of the incredible health and economic pressures it's put on us, I think that perhaps they need to be um, open, um, to be adaptable because it, it, what, what their, their friends two or three years ago might have had is easily coming into a contract, per, per, you, know, uh, you know, for example, well, that might just be a little change now. So they have to be willing to adapt knowing that if they pick the right place with the right people um, who they trust, uh, that they're gonna, they're gonna be able to grow into something that's what they want. Now, you mentioned the Philadelphia Phillies. Can you kind of talk about your involvement with Major League Baseball and also the different Phillies professional sports franchises? Yes. So, uh, you know, we have, um, we have just, you know, we're blessed. We have tremendous uh, relationships with sports teams here in the Philadelphia, our, our center at the Rothman Institute. We um, have taken care of the majority of the professional teams in the Philadelphia area, myself, the Phillies, for many years. Uh, but also the eager Eagles, the Sixers, we've taken care of the Flyers. We have relationships with uh, 12 uh, universities and colleges, including Villanova University, St. Joseph's University, Ryder University. We have 50 high schools that we take care of. So we have a very broad uh, sports program that takes care of athletes at all levels, professional, Olympic, collegiate, high school, rec athletes. And um, that's incredibly uh, powerful and it's incredibly educational, continues to be educational for me because we can, you can take a, you know, you can take a shoulder injury, uh, a generic shoulder injury, but if you, if that shoulder injury occurs in, a, in an Olympic or professional athlete, you might treat it a little bit differently than in that high school or that recreational athlete. And if you learn how to take care of like athletes that are in all different levels, all different sports, like you just deal with anything. And so that kind of education too, and that exposure is really helpful for young physicians, for our residents, for our fellows, for our young physicians. We, we purposely expose them to that. They, they shadow us as we take care of these teams so they can see how we deal with the same issue in any you know, variety of, of athletes. And they learn from that so that when they're in that role, you know, they know how to be, you know, an appropriate team physician. So I think for us, we're really blessed. For me, as I said, I, I always had interest in, in sports and I played sports. And so it was just like what I hoped to do. And at Curlin and Job, you know, that's one of the, you know, the main centers in the United States for taking care of professional athletes. It's you go there to learn how to be a team physician. And um, when I trained at Thomas Jefferson, I had the opportunity to be exposed to the Philadelphia Phillies as a resident. And when I went to Curlin and Job, I mentioned Frank Job was a, my, my mentor. And when I was moving back to Philadelphia, he was just so instrumental in helping guide me to, to begin to take care of the Phillies and helping and supporting me. So I kind of go back to what I said to you earlier, you know, that idea of, of mentors, maintaining those relationships and, 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 and using them so that you can move on in your career.
So as the role as the current 2021 president of the AOSSM Society, what type of things have you been doing? And also what type of resources have you been providing to the residents and the fellows? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And it's a great question. And I think that one of the important aspects of being in a society, being a member of a society, um, is um, utilizing all that the society has, all the you know the tools that the society provides, and 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 um, AOSSM is just an outstanding society in that respect with a mission of of education and research, and we have a variety of initiatives that are for our younger uh, our younger members. Uh, 43%, so just under 50% of our membership has less than 10 years in practice. So there, there's a huge segment of our, of our society that are young developing sports surgeons. And so to that point, we've recently established what we term an emerging leaders program. And that program is just, I think it's incredibly, uh, incredibly important because it, it for a variety of reasons, it speaks to sustainability. I think that the idea of this Emerging Leaders Initiative was to, um, to, to interest, to embrace, to, to nurture the highest level of, of sports care in our society, to, to maximize what we would do from an education or research perspective by including younger physicians so that they could help to guide like what we would do educationally in the future, what kind of research we would, we would do in the future. And then also to provide a seamless progression for leadership. You know, our, our current leaders, you don't wanna just drop the mic, right? You wanna pass the baton on to someone smoothly and comfortably. So if you bring young physicians in that have interest and you can mentor them and you guide them, then, then they're gonna be able to, you know, to, to assume those roles. And I think that I can remember vividly when I was younger and the mentors that I had, like I mentioned Frank Joe, but many, many others uh, and others in AOSSM, current still mentors that guided me. So the, the importance of doing this is, is really, it's key. And this emerging leaders program looks at a whole variety of things, things that I know that, that are important to you, Matthew, you know, practical questions for these young physicians. You know, how do I, how do I initiate my own practice? How do I care for young athletes? How do I, how do I market myself appropriately? How do I get involved in research when I'm a private physician and I don't have medical students or residents? How do I, how do I become involved in societies and leadership roles? How do I balance this all, like my work and my family and my my well-being? And so our Emerging Leaders Task Force does that. We have what are called night, one of the many things that this task force has is uh, these nightcaps. So we have these monthly virtual meetings that are very like more intimate, meant to be intimate meetings with our current leadership that might present on say one of those topics. So we'll have a, you know, one of our board members or a past president uh, that speaks to 20 or 25 younger members in a very open, way for an hour or so and in a more intimate group you can really engage people and it kind of nurtures and helps guide them um and it also like like gives them some confidence right it empowers them so they can develop relationships it's all about developing relationships here so that's one of the many things and we have webinars that are focused for our young members um on all kinds of topics that are timely for them at our upcoming annual meeting in uh, July in Nashville, we'll have a whole portion of the meeting that's focused on emerging leaders, where we'll have breakout sessions with uh, keynote speakers and our current leadership. So again, that we can begin to foster you know, leadership amongst, among them. I think that's incredibly important that AOSSM has done. One of the other really important aspects of AOSSM and, and recent initiatives is a diversity initiative. And, we created a diversity uh, task force that will look at all the issues that come with diversity and equity and inclusion and in every single way, uh, you know, um, gender, racial, age diversity, you know, um, sexual orientation, uh, disability, looking at all aspects so that we as a society and the members of our society can, if we're aware of these issues, we can actually take care of every athlete and, the, and what they might bring to the table, the issues or the problems they have to the table, not just the orthopedic issues, 
but everything else emotional and psychological that comes with being an athlete. And, and so I think that's really an important you know, aspect of what we do as well. So those two programs are, are hugely important. And then thirdly, I would say that we have what are called traveling fellowships. And what that means, Matthew, is that uh, we select uh, every year a group of young physicians, uh, newly you know, graduated physicians to travel to different parts of the world and uh, with what we call a godparent. So it would be a, a, you know, a, one of our current leaders uh, and travel with them to Europe or to South America or to Asia, to premier sports centers all over the world so that they can learn from some of the greatest sports surgeons in the world, but they're doing it with someone that's kind of been that path before and guided them. And I think it's all, those are all things that, that allow a young physician to, um, to really like mature, to gain confidence, to empower them. Now, as you know, I work with surgeons all across the country, but kind of focusing on the sports medicine fellows, a lot of times we have conversations regarding to whether the practice they're joining is involved with professional teams, collegiate teams, or high school teams. But what advice do you have for the next generation when they're first getting started as to how can they get their foot in the door, even as simple as an athletic director at a high school? Yeah. So great question. That's a great question because often, uh, these schools, these colleges, these universities, these professional teams, they have relationships already. So it, it becomes a very emotional thing sometimes when you're the new, the new doctor in the area and you might be supremely confident in your skills, um, but somebody's had a 20 year relationship with a high school and how does that work? And I think that um, you know, there's a tightrope that you walk a bit when you're a young physician you want to be confident in who you are and what you do, but you also have to be um, respectful of some of tradition and prior relationships. And if you make yourself available, if you're affable and you're available, everybody's able, like everybody's capable. They have the skills. Uh, but if you make, if you're affable and you're, you're available and you reach out to um, say a, a local high school to their athletic director or their head trainer, uh, and if they say, well, we have had a relationship with someone, and if you reach out to that physician, to him and her, to either him or her, and introduce yourself, and just even if you're, you know, if they're in another practice, and you say, listen, I'm, I'm I just, this is, this is who I am. This is my training. I'd love to help you in some way. If you ever need some time, I, you know, I, I'd love to like shadow you or participate. So I think if you approach it that way, that you can begin to develop relationships, if you make yourself available educationally, if you reach out to, uh, you know, athletic trainers in say, you know, take a, take a local league, for example, and you take the five or six or seven or 10 teams in the league, and you reach out to all those, uh, those athletic trainers. And you say, listen, I, you know, I, I, I'd love to set up some time, maybe an edge. Can we do something educationally? Like, do you have any topics that you're interested in? And our world is virtual now. So, so can we do something virtual and we can talk about a topic that's of interest to you and, I can present and we can do a Q&A. And so you begin to develop those relationships in a really healthy way. And if you do that, it's, it's incredibly powerful how that athletic trainer is going to say, wow, like that was a great, you know, he or she, they're great. And they're very approachable and they're really smart. And, and when they have a problem with an athlete, they're going to think about you and they're going to send that athlete to you so that you have to almost let it like evolve in that, in that way. The pro teams like, that's much harder because they'll have established relationships. And a lot of times the relationships are, are also, uh, though they, they are not contractually set up, there's, there, there, there's some sense of like the marketing perspective. Professional leagues demand that there be a division of church and state. You cannot have a medical team that, you know, that, that is directly tied contractually in terms of marketing. But often it happens like in a health system. If you're in a part of a health system, then that health system may do marketing with the team too. But there are harder relationships. If you join a practice that has relationships with uh, professional teams, uh, then it's much easier to get involved. And we, we purposely do this, as I mentioned earlier. So for our, we've taken care of these professional teams for literally decades. And it's been very important to me to be able to, again, pass that baton smoothly. So we'll bring in our young physicians and we'll have them participate in the care with these teams. So the teams get to know them, the players are comfortable with them. 
but we're always around as more senior physicians. And I, I think that's a way again, to, to pass the baton on to someone in the, in the best way. I know offline, we kind of talked about how some medical schools have been uh, utilizing the podcast to kind of figure out what specialty they want to go into. So kind of a twofold question though, what are you looking for when interviewing residents for spots? And also what are you looking for when interviewing for fellowship spots at your location? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a great question, Matthew. And I, uh, again, um, the majority of these people are so talented. I mean, they come with just tremendous pedigree and they've, they've been educated at great, at great places. Uh, they've very often been involved in research. So for us in our institution, both our residency at Thomas Jefferson and our F sports medicine fellowship at Thomas Jefferson, we're very interested in those two things. The, you know, the, the, obviously the clinical part of it, but also the education, educational and research part of it. So when we're looking at applicants, uh, we're looking at, at uh, applicants that have shown interest in those areas. You know, they, 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 their clinical expertise, that's gonna be appropriate to their level. There, you know, there are some people who are incredibly talented and very early on, you can see that, but most people just mature appropriately. But it's more like the letter of recommendation they get from their current, uh, you know, uh, attendings that say that you know they're 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 engaged and 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 this is their skill set in in the office in the operating room, but then also they they've taken the time to do do research and it doesn't you know it doesn't have to be exactly in a specific area, but as long as they've done research and not just tried to do it, they've actually gone the path of of publications and presentations, and so at the residency level, I think that's important. Uh, and then, and then vitally important is how you communicate with people, right? And, and so that's maybe one of the, that, that, that is perhaps the most intangible, but as important as anything else, right? How you communicate. And that comes across in, you know, an interview, I think. And, and it's important to be able to, to uh, convey your thoughts, to be respectful, but also be, you know, be appropriately confident in who you are. At a fellowship level, the same kind of things apply. But certainly the research that we, we hope our fellows have engaged in would be more focused on sports medicine and, and you know, sports medicine research. But I think the essence of it is the same. This is great. And this is, Matthew, this is very important to me, the, the whole idea of, um, again, how we pass a baton smoothly. And um, it's like a legacy and it's important for us at Rothman, it's, it's incredibly important at AOSSM. And, you know, for me personally, I have a, a, a young son who is a young sports medicine surgeon. And so like, I like, I want him to have all these great things. And, and I think that it, it, it makes it even that much more tangible and important for me that there be a framework that young physicians can really embrace and, and, and allow them to just thrive in the future because they're going to be the ones that are going to be taking care of us in the future. And, and we want them to be confident and we want them to be able to you know, not be afraid to keep asking, how can I do this better and better? And that's all, you know, that's, that's, that's the beauty of this whole process. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Interview with the Surgeon. Until next time, stay focused and keep following your dreams.